In this presentation, we're going to look at the construction of a simple database using the MySQL Workbench. As an example, I'm going to use the construction of a database for a personal library. As you can see here, this is a section of the bookshelf in my office with lots and lots of books in it, uh, including books on PHP, you'll notice in the center there. But you'll also notice that there are lots and lots of books by O'Reilly and Associates to publish books on open source software. Now, the simplest approach to constructing a database is to construct essentially a spreadsheet, a single table. But if we did that for this kind of library, we'd find that we had lots of books like the Pearl Cookbook, published by O'Reilly and Associates, DNS and Bind, published by O'Reilly and Associates, Network Security Assessment, published by O'Reilly and Associates. And so O'Reilly and Associates and their location and other information would appear again and again and again, wasting space in a single table design. So instead, what we'll do is normalize the database into two tables. And I've shown a very simple example here. I'm going to create a database which has got two tables, one which lists book information, the book title, ISBN, author, and also a separate table that contains the publisher information. Uh, such as the company name, the city it's located in, that kind of thing. Now, you'll see that each publisher will appear only once and will be uniquely identified by a primary key in the database, uh, which is the publisher reference number. So when I actually come to enter the data into the database, I will use these values. So O'Reilly and Associates is publisher reference number one. John Wiley and Sons is publisher reference number two. Uh, Osborne McGraw Hill is three, and so on and so forth. Uh, now, for each book, we don't put the entire publisher information into place. Instead, we have a column, which is also the publisher reference number, which is a foreign key used to look up the corresponding entry in the publisher table. So, for the book Incident Response by Kevin Mandia, the publisher reference number here is three, and we use that to look up the primary key value of three in the publisher table, giving us the book publisher, Osborne McGraw-Hill. So let's look at how you would use the MySQL workbench to construct a database that fulfills that uh, design. So down here, I actually have the MySQL workbench running. Uh, I assume that you already have set it up. You, were built, you have the ability to connect uh, to a particular um, server. I'm going to use localhost for this example. So we're going to start by creating a new model for our database. And in fact, I'm going to go into the uh, uh, model editor and I'm going to click on uh, the creation of a new schema. So we'll click on add new schema and I'm going to create a schema, double click on the schema up here and edit its name and call it library. So now we've created the library schema in this design, in this model. Now we can start to create the tables. If I double click on add table, okay, it should go ahead and create a table called table one, and this will become the publisher table. So we name it publisher, and we can start to enter the various different columns. Double click here. The publisher, remember, starts with a publisher reference number. The number is an integer, it's one of the natural numbers, and automatically the editor has made this be a primary key for the database, which means it's indexed on that and we can locate any entry based on this number very quickly. Because it's part of the primary key, in fact it's the complete primary key, it has to be not null. And I'm also going to check the AI, which means auto increment, so that we don't need to key in a value for this, the database will actually automatically add the next integer value in whenever we add a, a publisher. Next, I'll put in the company name, like so. You can see the type for this is variable length string of characters, 45 characters. I'll edit that and make it 60. And I'll also put in here, though it wasn't shown in the earlier diagram, a city, which I'll leave as varcar45. Next, I'll add a table for the books. So we double click on add table, we rename the table book, and we can add the various different columns. 
So we'll start by adding the title. Oh, sorry, we have a book reference number first of all, which again will be used as a primary key perhaps. And again, we'll make that one be auto increment. So we need a key and a value for it. Then we'll have title. Uh, I'll make that one be Varkar 60 in length. ISBN, which I'll make be Varkar 20 in size. And the author. Again, I'll make it Varkar 60, which should allow plenty of space. And finally, we'll just leave it at that point, in fact. It's actually added an extra column. I'm just going to uh, choose Delete Selected Columns. And you can see up here in this tab, it's showing the model is not yet being saved. So I'll just press Control S. I'm going to save this one as Library. And I'm going to put it in, actually, the Documents, My Documents. So I know where to find it again. Now, let's look at a diagram uh, of this. So if I double click on Add Diagram, here's our diagram. And I can actually drag out the book and publisher tables onto the diagram. And I want to create the many to one relationship uh, between the book and publisher. Notice that we had a a uh, foreign key in the diagram, but I haven't yet added it while creating these tables. So I'll click this relationship button here and click first of all on, whoops, I've done it wrongly. I was doing this without a safety net. So I'm just going to delete that. Click on delete. I'll click on this link once here, once here. And now we have a many to one relationship between book and publisher. And if I hover over this, it actually will show you that the book publisher underscore PRFNBR references publisher PRFNBR. And it's defaulting to showing that on updates and deletes, it will take no action. So that's added that extra foreign key field. We can also, here you can see the indexes, for example, which allow us to quickly look things up uh, in the, um, the tables. So I'll press Control S to save that again. So now we actually have the complete database schema um, set up correctly for this very simple example. Uh, now what I'm going to do is to choose database. Oh, sorry, I'm doing this on the laptop. And because it's not that powerful, and because I'm recording a video, it keeps popping up this dialog. I'm now going to choose database forward engineer. And we'll connect to localhost and actually export this database schema to create that schema on the server. Now, if you already have a database schema, you may in fact, uh, an existing database that is, you may not want to actually delete that and recreate it. So you wouldn't want to, for example, generate a drop schema statement. In this case, if you ever want to recreate the tables, you would in fact generate these, these drop objects before each create object statements. You'll see what I mean in a second. And if I click on Next, you'll see it now proposes to export two tables. You haven't created any views or routines or triggers or anything. So if I click on Next, it actually writes the SQL, which is going to execute uh, on the server to actually create this schema. So there's the various statements. And if I now click on Next, it executes it. You can see it's connected, executed it, and it all finished correctly. So now we actually have a database uh, called library on the server. And if I want to actually go ahead and edit the data in the tables in the server, I go back to the home page in the MySQL workbench and click on edit table data. Now it allows us to connect to any of the servers with which we've got connections stored uh, in the workbench. And if I select localhost, because that's what I'm working on right now, click on next. We'll choose the library schema, which is the one we're working on. And we'll start by adding values into the publisher table. Once again, I'm doing this without a safety net, so you, you may see me mistype things. So because the publisher reference number is going to be automatically incremented and inserted by the database, we can just click directly in company name and start adding the various companies. So I'll start with O'Reilly and Associates. 
their city is Sebastopol, I remember, in California. And I'll just tab onto the next line. I'll add John Wiley and, oops, and Sons. Um, I forget the city, but I think they're in New York, New York State. And finally, Osborne McGraw Hill, also in New York from memory. So we've entered up some data. We haven't actually allocated the publisher reference numbers, but the system will do that automatically. If I click on Apply, it will generate the SQL statements to insert this data into the database. And it's quite instructive to look at the SQL as this thing works. You can see the actual SQL here. Uh, insert into schema library, into the publisher table, the company name and city columns, the values O'Reilly and Associates, Sebastopol, California, John Wiley and Sons, New York, Oswald McGraw Hill, New York. If I click on Apply, it goes away and executes that, actually inserts the data into the database. Now, I can actually confirm that by browsing uh, in the database. We'll do that in a few minutes. But now I'm going to go back uh, to the MySQL model. Oh, sorry, to the home page, I should say. And once again, I'm going to choose Edit Table Data and add some data for some books. So once again, I connect to localhost, click on Next. The schema we'll choose is the library schema. And it's automatically selected the book table. Uh, I click on Finish, and we get yet another editor window. We should get an editor window. Let's just try that again. Edit table data, localhost, next. We choose library, we choose book, click on finish. Maybe yeah, I clicked on cancel last time. Nope, it's playing up. Let's just exit and restart it. So back to all programs. MySQL Workbench. So once again, edit table data. We're going to connect to localhost, the library schema, book table. Click on finish. This time it's done it. And now I'll edit four books just to demonstrate what's going on here. So I'll start with the book Network Security Assessment. ISBN value is 0 596 0061 X. The author is McNabb. Chris. Let me correct that. So I've got correct spelling. And the publisher reference number, well, it's published by O'Reilly, which we know is number one. Then we'll take Applied Cryptography. ISBN 0-471-11709-9. The author is Schneier Bruce. And it's published by John Wiley, uh, so we know that's number two. The next book is SSH, The Secure Shell, ISBN 0 596 001 1. Uh, the author is Daniel Barrett. Also published by O'Reilly, so it's publisher number one. And finally, Incident Response by Kevin Mandia. The ISBN is 0 072 9 Mandia. Kevin. And it's published by Osborne McGraw Hill, which is number three. So, having done all of that, 
we now click on apply you can see it's actually generated the SQL insert statements if we click on apply it successfully applied that to the database now we can query the database to see that the contents are correct uh, by simply uh, double clicking to open a connection and start querying and it automatically will write some SQL for us in fact um, if we choose for example library and tables actually he's done it in this case but if we look at the book table for example um, we can say for example use library semicolon to terminate the SQL statement then select star from book semicolon and if I now click on this lightning symbol up here it executes this entire script which will select all the columns from book and there we can see that the books were entered correctly now let's look at a more complex example of a query let's actually do a join to pick up the data from the two tables and join them correctly so I'll just back up from the from here and I'll show you a slightly more sophisticated example if we select the book title and we'll make the column which appears here in this little report be capitalized like so title as title author as author company name from the publisher table uh, as publisher and city as city we won't terminate the statement with semicolon we've got to do some more work we've got to select from two different tables so we specify from book comma publisher the join condition where now we've got the PRF NBR which is the published reference number in the publisher table PRF NBR equals and over here you notice it's named publisher PRF NBR in the foreign key column of the book table so we put publisher underscore PRF NBR and finally we'll sort it order by title in alphabetical order semicolon so let's just try submitting that and see if it works correctly so we click on apply actually I should have chosen a new window let's just copy that out of here uh, and go to query uh, hang on, where are we? Yeah, USQL tab. Press Control V to paste the text in, and execute it here. That's better. And you can see now we've actually got our joined tables for each book. It's showing the title the author, the publisher and city which it picks up from the uh, books table and the publisher table combined and it's correctly put in O'Reilly and Associates for the two books by O'Reilly you know it's entered only once in one table so this demonstrates how to construct a basic SQL query and submit it uh, in the SQL MySQL workbench uh, also how you create the database schema